Do you want? Should we check it? If we check it, we're gonna we're gonna have some escapees. See. <laughs> Hi, I'm Samantha Senebaratna, and today I'm going to show you how to make Cracker Jack from scratch. <laughs> I'm definitely a fan of popcorn in any form, so that includes Cracker Jack, which is just popcorn coated in a molasses and brown sugar caramel. We cook it and then bake it to make it nice and crispy. They're super easy to make and very, very delicious. So the first thing we need to do is pop some popcorn. This is how I do it. You can do it any way that you want. I put oil in a big pot, and then I always put like two or three little kernels in there. I'm waiting to hear those first couple kernels pop. Then I'll know I can add the rest of my kernels. I've heard that sometimes too, like if they're really old and dry, which you would never know when you bought it, they won't pop. <gasps> heard it. Yes, we're ready. I like to just like swirl it so all the fat distributes. I hear it. It's starting to go and basically you know that it's sort of ready to stop when there's a longer space in between pops. Once it starts going, I turned down the heat a little. I'm so afraid of it burning. Burnt popcorn is one of the saddest things on earth. That's not true, but it's pretty sad. Now that sounds quiet. There's a lot of unpopped popcorn down there. That's just my, maybe they're old, woo, old kernels. So now I would turn off the heat and I would scoop out the pop popcorn. The other thing is it's really important to take out all the unpopped popcorn before you coat it in sugar because the last thing you want is for anyone to bite down on a kernel unexpectedly. So I'm going to lose the unpopped ones and maybe pop a little bit more so that I can get the right amount. Okay, so we just finished popping in the popcorn, made sure there are no unpopped kernels in there, and we're going to add our peanuts. These are red skinned peanuts. I think these are the traditional peanut for Cracker Jack, which is why I called for them. I also, they're my favorite peanuts because they taste really peanutty. They're really good. The peanuts are salted, but I'm not salting my popcorn. I'm gonna salt it once it's covered in caramel, mostly because I like that it sticks to the outside and then when you put it in your mouth, you kind of get salt first. It's a personal preference. Once we make the caramel, everything moves very, very quickly. So it's good to have your pans prepped. I'm greasing my two pans with neutral oil. I like to have my ingredients sort of out for this one. You don't want to be measuring while you go. It's sort of a fly by the seat of your pants kind of recipe. That's not what that phrase means. <laughs> but that's okay. All right. Now we can move on to our caramel. Brown sugar and butter. Molasses is kind of what makes Cracker Jack taste like Cracker Jack, as opposed to just kettle corn or any other kind of caramel corn. So I used a lot of molasses molasses forward. Melt that all together. I'm gonna use a thermometer for this one. We're cooking it to 248 degrees. Mm, it smells like Cracker Jack. I'm just cooking it until the butter melts and then I'm gonna put on the thermometer. Now we just wait. 248. This is actually a forgiving caramel as far as caramels go because for some reason it doesn't crystallize very easily. I'm sure somebody can prove me wrong, but you have the molasses in there and the butter. It just seems a little more stable. If it were just sugar and water, that's when you run into some crystallization troubles. Now we're there. I'm like an old lady. I gotta like squint in order to see the lines, but I think we got it. Okay, so now I'm going to put in my vanilla and my baking soda. When you first put the caramel in, it kind of doesn't look like it's ever gonna coat everything, but it does. Use the biggest bowl you can find. I don't have a bowl this size at my house, so I do it just in two batches. But it's much easier if you have a giant bowl. This rules. 
Just keep tossing it until it's pretty evenly coated. Don't touch it. I know it's so tempting. I really want to eat a piece, but you don't. It's hot, so don't touch it. Now we can spread this out evenly. And I'm going to salt it now. I like a lot of salt. And now this goes into a 250 degree oven for about 20, 25 minutes. In the oven, it still even feels like a little bit um, wet, for lack of a better word. It's not wet, but like a little soggy. But when you take it out and let it cool completely, it will crisp up. So now we just let it cool completely. Doesn't that look good? You don't want to put this in a, in a Tupperware or anything like that until it is cool, 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 because then it will sog out. They sound really crispy. It's a nice sound. So now it's ready to eat. Ooh. <laughs> I'll just clean these up. <laughs> it's so good. It's really salty, which I really like. Can you hear that crunch? Very molasses y <laughs> In a good way. <laughs> it's great.